So uh, first off, welcome everybody. Sorry for those technical difficulties. Uh, my name is Andrew and I'm so excited that you've decided to join us for our 20th Tech Bytes episode, which is incredibly exciting. Um, we, When we started these sessions back in March, we could never have imagined that we would have been able to produce as much amazing content and uh, we wouldn't be able to do it if it wasn't for the spectacular viewers like you here on Twitch um, and over on YouTube. So thank you so much for viewing and making what we're we're doing here um, with the Tech Byte series um, so possible. Now, if it is your first time here on a Tech Byte session, um, just a couple of um, pieces of information for you. So, if you are catching this on uh, YouTube, I'm so sorry that you're going to miss out on a little bit of this. But if you are catching us live on Twitch, we have our stream chat that's going on um, either down below or just over that way, um, where you're able to ask questions to our presenter as we go through. So, if there's something really cool um, that is presented that you want to know more information about you can ask some questions um, and otherwise it's, this is really just kind of an interactive opportunity for you to learn something new about something really exciting now today's session is the second in our series on um, cybersecurity, and today is going to be an introduction to malware so on the last session it was an introduction to phishing um, today it's going to be an introduction to malware and if you're not sure what malware is um, we've got the perfect person to talk to you about that um, Sargoon um, is a master's of engineering candidate in information security here at the University of Victoria she also happens to be an amazing member of the high tech U staff team um, she delivered our phishing um, uh, tech bite not too long ago and it was so popular that she said hey can I do another one of these sessions and I said of course you can let's do something really cool and interesting um, and she was so um, ready to go with creating this awesome um, tech bite for today so um, I'm gonna um, sort of move us over so that you can see um, Sargoon in just a second and uh, I'm gonna unmute Sargoon on here and we're just gonna sort out all this stuff um, and then we should be good to go so Sargoon I am unmuting you now and I'm just going to transition you over to the screen. <laughs> All right, there you go. Hi, um, thank you for having me here today. Um, today we're going to be learning about um, malware. And on our agenda today we have um, malware and its types. Next we're going to be learning about the methods of infection um, by which malware finds its way to your computer and infects it. And then after covering the scary part, we are gonna be talking about the preventive measures um, by which you can protect your computers and other systems from malware. So let's get started. Um, so what is malware? Malware is short for malicious software and it is generally a piece of code or a set of instructions which um, installs some harmful software on your computer without your uh, prior knowledge or consent. Um, malware has been around from a really long time and it goes back to like 1970s. And in fact, um, when it was first written, um, it, it was meant to be a prank, but um, now in today's world of like high tech, um, most malwares are meant to destroy systems and they cost billions and billions of um, dollars. And um, they can also be used for financial gain or even uh, for political espionage. Um, some really popular malware of all time is um, Melissa, Stuxnet, um, WannaCry ransomware, and um, yeah, these are some of the really popular malware which um, caused um, the companies uh, lots of and lots and lots of money. Um, so moving on, we're gonna. Um, we're going to learn how what malware can do to your system. So first up, we have deleting files. Um, so if your system gets malware, it has the ability, it might have the ability to delete some important files off of your computer without your knowledge or permission. Um, next, it can lock you out of your system. And um, for uh, for giving you access, giving you back the access of your system, it can demand a ransom. And this is a particular case of ransomware. 
Third, we have stealing personal information. Some of the malwares are designed to um, monitor the user activity and gain um, their user login credentials, suppose their banking information, um, and it can be really uh, harmful. Um, the, uh, the fourth up, we have uh, malware fraud felony in, uh, in which um, it can cause bank um, tra tra it can cause transferring of funds from the banks um, without the account holder's knowledge. And the last up, we have uh, malicious redirection in websites. So if the websites that you're visiting from your web browser are compromised or are not secure in any way, um, they can cause uh, malicious redirection. Um, and uh, force the uh, system to um, download some of the uh, malicious softwares without your knowledge. So now let's talk about the infection methods. Um, number one are spam emails. Um, so we get lots of spam emails on a daily basis. And the reason why we should not check it out is because spam emails might contain some of the malicious links, which can cause, um, uh, which can trigger the malware uh, installation. And next is infected removable devices like your USB sticks. In fact, the, the Stuxnet um, virus, which, um, uh, was a really popular um, virus of all time, and um, it was introduced by a um, USB stick. Um, malicious websites. So, as I said earlier, um, compromised websites can cause redirection, which can in turn trigger um, the installation of malware on your system. Um, last are exploit kits, which have more advanced features and they have the ability to remain undetected and um, hidden in your computer. Um, so now let's quickly uh, go over the types of malware that we're gonna be learning about today. First up, we have virus, then uh, Trojan horse, um, worm, adware, and then spyware. So first we're gonna be learning about virus. Um, so if you um, think about the term virus in biological in a biological sense, it means that um, a virus has the capability of modifying and um, the the mo modifying your DNA um, and uh, um, infecting your body. So. The computer virus um, acts in the same way. It has the ability to infect the other computer applications by piggybacking on them and then modifying them um, to include a possibly evolved version of itself. Um, it, uh, it is implemented in two modes. Um, the first is the insertion mode in which the virus gets inserted into your computer and then uh, comes the execution mode um, in which the uh, virus executes the malicious part of the program. And they can be classified into various types uh, depending on uh, what they infect, what type of files they infect and where they live. Um, example, file format virus. Um, some examples for that could be the .exe or .dll files, which um, are executable. And then we have macro virus and boot virus. Um, next up, we have worm. So the main difference between virus and worm is that virus needs a host to be able to replicate itself, but the worm has the uh, capability of self-replicating. Um, um, it is designed to spread throughout the network. Example, the I love you malware attack was sent, as, sent out as a love letter from 
um, the hacker to a person. And if the person clicks on that um, attachment um, of that love letter, then the um, malware um, infects the first 50 um, uh, uh, users of his address book. And rabbits and mass mailers are the most common type of worms. Um, third on our list is Trojan Horse. Um, so a Trojan Horse is a program which disguises itself and it appears to be benign, but it does some of the activities without the um, user knowing and they can be malicious. Um, Trojan horses are often implemented as a client server program in which the server module is on the victim host and the client module is um, often the attacker's um, uh, computer and he is or he or she is um, monitoring all your activities on the uh, victim host. It can neither replicate nor copy itself and it can be used to monitor the user activities and then gain the user credentials for the banking information or any other accounts. Um, some examples for Trojan horses are downloader Trojans. So downloader Trojans are some uh, softwares which would download and trigger malware um, installation on your system without your prior knowledge or consent and backdoor Trojans, etc. cetera. Um, so fourth on our list is Adver. Um, Adver is a software program which is designed to throw advertisements on your screen um, whenever, uh, mostly whenever you're visiting a web browser. Um, it, um, it, it usually comes when the user installs some free or some shared wear application, like some open source application, and you won't even know and it will install itself without you, your consent. Um, or it can come from a malicious website or any compromised website, which is insecure. Um, it is also called malvertising. Um, so the last on our list is spyware. Um, spyware is a software program which enables the attacker to um, quietly run on your background and monitor all of your um, activities like the sites that you're visiting, the your um, browser history, your emails, um, your, uh, your user credential passwords and uh, usernames, etc. And it quietly installs itself um, without you knowing. And it is used to steal some really important information from the user. So now that we have talked about the scary part, um, let's move on to the approach on how we can get rid of malware. Um, so first up, we have detection. Um, we need to detect we, um, the type of malware that we have and then um, find the proper ways of removing the malware accordingly. And then in order to not get the malware again, we need to um, um, follow some preventive measures. Um, so first for detection of malware, you have certain tells or like symptoms of telling whether your system has malware or not. So first would be strange computer behavior, like freezing up of your screen at random times or like crashing um, emails being sent without your permission. That's like really dangerous. And your computer being really, really slow, even though you're not um, using any heavy applications like your virtual box or um, your VMware and increased CPU usage. Um, yeah, freezing um, of your screen and crashing web browsers, etc., and programs being modified and reconfigured without your knowledge. So these are some of the symptoms in which um, by which you can indicate whether you have a malware or not. Um, so based on the tells, we can um, 
remove the malware um, in these steps. So first of all, you have to disconnect from you, from the internet because that's um, where the hacking starts. Um, second of all, you need to enter the safe mode in PC when rebooting. And then um, on the there's a there's an application called resource monitor in the safe mode, um, and you have to check that resource monitor for any malicious activities. Um, next, you have to download a malware scanner and then run it um, to see what kind of malware your system is suffering from and how you can um, remove it. And then fix your uh, web browsers. By fixing, I mean clearing your, um, uh, repairing it, and then uh, clearing your web history, and also clearing out your cache. Um, these are the steps. These are this is the general approach for removing the malware. It can differ from type of um, malware that your system has. Um, lastly, we're going to talk about the protection against malware. Um, so the basic step to protect yourself against malware would be investing in a good quality anti-software, antivirus software, such as Norton or Kapersky or um, AVG, Avast. Um, these are all some really good quality antivirus softwares, and they will ensure that your system is protected. Then comes anti-spyware pro programs, um, which, um, which prevent any spyware um, applications from being installed onto your computer without your knowledge. And then anti-spam programs. This is the same as antivirus um, and firewalls. Firewalls will protect your uh, network from getting any um, malicious or uh, bad traffic and um, protect your system altogether. And Last would be run the virus scans regularly because it's really, really important to conduct regular virus scans. Um, so these are some of the useful links um, which I uh, use when I have to learn about malware. And Andrew will be linking them in the um, chat box for your reference. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Sargun. That was amazing. Um, it's always so great to um, connect with you because not only are you bringing um, some really relevant things um, from your education, but also some amazingly, amazingly useful things for students to know about cybersecurity, which I know is definitely an area where a lot of people still really don't have any idea. Yeah, I know. Um, so, it's, yeah, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Um, so it's like really important to protect your data because data can be like really important for hackers, especially, but it's up to you um, and how you decide to uh, protect it. Absolutely. So thank you again so much, Sargoon. That was amazing. Um, thank you to all of our viewers who tuned in here on Twitch today. Um, if you are catching this um, on Twitch and you want to catch it again and just check out all the stuff that, um, that Sargoon was talking about today, uh, this will be uploaded to YouTube very soon. If you are um, wanting to find out more information, um, you can check us out, hightechu.ca. The link is just in the bottom corner down there. Um, you can also um, find us on Twitter, on on Instagram, on Facebook. We've got a really great social media person on right now. Um, and of course, stay tuned to our YouTube channel and our Twitch channel for more information on these Tech Bytes episodes um, and our Q&A corner sessions as well. So from all of us at High Tech U to all of you, thank you so much um, for, for showing up and for, for watching the stream today. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and we will see you next time. <laughs>